they all are really connected. Is anthroposophy living in Waldorf schools? By and large, having visited 100 Waldorf schools, actually it's 110 Waldorf schools now, in the past 30 years, having in the last two years visited about 30 different Waldorf schools across the country, I would say anthroposophy is ailing. It's an invalid in the average Waldorf school, the independent Waldorf school, that anthroposophy is hardly there. Some examples, a verse such as this, um, the sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. This is spoken by uh, the children in the first four grades. The spirit of God, it weaves today in more and more schools the Creator Spirit weaves. Okay, big deal. You know, you don't want to say God because, as one teacher told me, there's a boy in my class who's an atheist, and he gets very upset. He'll stand up and walk out of the room, or he'll cry and scream when I mention God. Oh, well, that's fine. If there's one child in the class who cries and screams, definitely take God out of the verse. In fact, she went through every poem that she had, from teacher training and so on, and cross God out and put in other words. But, okay, what's the difference? Big deal. God, creator, spirit. Come on, relax. It's the same thing, right? Yeah, I mean, if you assume God created the world, no problem. But if you only see God as the creator spirit, that's Brahma. But what about Vishnu? What about Shiva? who also destroys the world, those are all, we could say, attributes of the divine being. That God is a very, very complex being. He wears lots of hats, as it were, and plays lots of roles, and it's very, very limiting. So if the child for four years, every day, we know how powerfully verses work on children's whole formative body, if they are saying only creator spirit and envisioning a being from whom the world streams, that's only a small part. Will that also give them the impulse to take those creative forces and go forward with them, work with them? Whereas the more nebulous, vague, all-comprehensive word God, it's, it's a little bit more of a mystery. It's not so easily explained. He's the one who created the world. They can sense that there's more to it. Increasingly in schools, creator is used or nothing is used. Ways are found to take God out of that verse completely. Um, as well, as I mentioned in other verses, as well as in stories where anything divine is mentioned, it's gone. Um, now, I'm not saying that there's a big meeting of the faculty and they you know, all sat down and decided to take God out of things. That's part of the problem. When Lucifer is around, you've got teachers who do everything at meetings because they're, they just love being on stage. You know, They wait till a decision is nearly made and then, I can't do it! I just can't do it! I've got to live with it and meditate on it. No! No! Oh, God! I quit! If you do it, I quit! Oh, they just love that sort of thing. They're way, way out there. But the things that I'm talking about, there's no drama. There's no drama queen or prima donna there at all. Once again, it's going on. You know, where's the rest of me, as Ronald Reagan said in one of his movies? He's off, the, he's out of the picture. You know, we can't see him. What's his body like? Steiner shows his body is actually like a big corkscrew because he's always kind of inculcating himself into things very quietly and waiting there. This is done by individual teachers who in the training did not really connect to Anthroposophy 101. Many teachers have said, I sat through that foundation year because I knew it was a precondition for going on. But honestly, I just felt those people were fanatics or they were just so rigid or whatever. And I'm just not interested in it. It's not my path. It's not my life. In fact, I will go to many Waldorf schools and search in vain 
for a photograph of Rudolf Steiner. Now, not that it's got to be, you know, like a big billboard when you come into the school, and certainly I've looked in Kemberton, and yes, there is one, I saw it, I know it's there. But just in other schools, let's say smaller schools, in a um, little bit more, you know, out of the way parts of America, no picture of Steiner, but you know what you see in more and more schools right up front? Buddhist prayer flags, the pennants. In fact, I would say if there's any spiritual path that is really growing in Waldorf schools and becoming perhaps dominant, and I would imagine if we look back in 20 years, we may very well say, where did that come from? It's Buddhism. Buddhism is growing not only among many parents in Waldorf schools, but also among the teachers as well. And I've been in many a classroom where on the teacher's desk there's a photograph of his spiritual teacher, who may be a Tibetan Buddhist, who may be a Hindu, but very, very rarely will one see a photograph of Rudolf Steiner on anybody's desk, or even of any other recognizable anthroposophist. It is fading away, and nobody's talking about it. Because you go to big conferences, and it's always, you know, three ways to put Christ in the center of your teaching. And, you know, the Christian impulse in Waldorf, looking at the lecture titles, everything's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong. We're deepening our work. The pedagogical <coughs> section keeps growing and so on. The reality, I'm sorry to say, is not so. I go to the front lines. I go in the trenches. I'm not a general. I just hang out with people in their classrooms and I see what people are doing, and there's a quiet revolution going on. And it is basically, in a way, undermining the spiritual basis of Waldorf education. And it's not like I can point to somebody and say, he did it, he did it. You know, it's not like it's Van Dugan's secret agents or anything. These are people doing their very best. They're often excellent teachers, <coughs> but you can see they're not gonna last for eight years maybe not even for five years or three years, there's something really missing. Their souls may be beautiful, and indeed a path like Buddhism does a tremendous amount for the human soul. Or even the work that they're doing out of pop psychology, the work they're doing on themselves. They might go to, you know, weekend workshops, find your inner child, things like that. They're often on a soul level in very, very good shape. There's something else. The spirit is not there. And here I think we come to the naughtiest point. Perhaps what um, really characterizes anthroposophy and what separates it from virtually any other spiritual path. I'm not saying it's better or worse, but it really makes it different. It's that again and again, Steiner begged his students and now begs us understand the difference between soul and spirit. And right now, Waldorf education has increasingly become an education of soul. And there is little spirit there. And this is what today's child needs. Lucifer has already, in a way, made an entente cordial with the Christ being. Lucifer can be worked with on the soul level. And in fact, he has a tremendous amount to give the human soul, especially through the arts, and can inflame and, and enliven our creative forces.